Okay, dental technicians, how are we doing? Happy Saturday. Uh, I was sitting here, like many weeks, doing uh, a little extra work here on the weekend and thinking this has gone on for quite a long time, many years. And in front of you, I see a piece of paper. This is Denture Adventure, I'm going to call it. 80,001 and 80,002. Meaning, it's probably been that many cases that I keep seeing the same thing, but also I probably... Uh, created that many. So let's see what's going on today that we can maybe um, um, pick up a few things. Uh, let's kind of zoom in a little bit. Here we have a Kennedy uh, class one partial denture and the practitioner has asked for apron design and we went ahead and created that. But while we're looking at this, uh, uh, let's go backwards. I'm going to look at the model. So now I'm talking to dental assistants or dentists that are pouring the models or dental technicians that have poured the model. Uh, please, this wasn't me. Dental assistant here, dental assistant here. Attention to detail, dental assistant. I see a piece of the soft tissue missing here. So this I'm going to title Denture Adventure 80001 Pretendodontics or yeah, pretend, pretending dontics, pretending prosthodontics. A lot of guesswork here. I've taken apart the tongue area. So this is a uh, dentist here, I've got the glosses. So air one, air two, air three. Now. Let's leave them alone. We can always learn from what we're doing. I don't have to move forward with this. This is just Joe Average 80,001. But I'm looking at the uh, dental technician now that created this uh, PFM. I see the ledge. I see another crown here on the canine with the rest feathering up to the incisal edge. I see another one here on the mesial occlusal a faint ledge here, I'll just outline in blue. And now I'm looking at this, oh, hang on a second, we got a little bit of rest preparation here. I'm also looking at this now uh, with a critical eye of our metalwork dental technicians out there that are still part of this pretendodontics uh, today. Um, this ledge here looks like it was probably the width of the number seven spatula, the, uh, not even parallel to the plane of occlusion. This rest here on the canine into the occlusion, which I had to shorten because when we look aesthetically, facially, we don't want to see any chrome uh, above the height of contour here, or we don't want to see a chrome on the incisal edge unless this is an incisal rest. And you can see how flat the occlusion is on all this bridge work here. Again, a mesoclusal rest may have been more prudent to move the fulcrum line a little bit more anterior. Uh, we could prolong maybe the life of this canine. The ledge uh, should be the same width as the throw of the undercut created by the ceramic technician on the buckle. So now we have an undercut, even though it was surveyed, an undercut of maybe a millimeter where we've got a ledge of about three millimeters. Because we want this uh, buckle clasp to engage as long as possible as the reciprocation is engaging uh, the lingual side of the 3-4 on the path of dislodgement. So we don't have that. We don't have it here, we don't have it here. So we've got a dental assistant error, we've got a dentist error, we've got a dental assistant error or dentist error for allowing that to go out of the office. And we have a dental technician metalwork error and we have a ceramic error on the buckle of 3-4. Now here, incoming myself, no more errors. Make the framework, fits intimately, uh, perfectly all the way around. Now, no clasps. Dentist has asked for Tyconium clasps. Tyconium clasps or Tyconium wire is not made 
anymore. So now this brings us to the question and the discussion of Tyconium, which was created by a company out of Chicago called Austinol, which has been purchased many years ago. Oh, Nobilium, which is out of uh, Albany, New York. And then they were purchased Austinol as a competitor to their own system, Nobilium, and Tyconium was a system. And it was a calcium sulfate casted stone investment. So this is uh, below 600 degrees Celsius. A casting temperature where today's chromium cobalts are usually a little bit above 1400 degrees Celsius. If we look at uh, even nobiliums or bagos or dentorums and the list goes on, but those are, I guess, the main ones. So Tyconium wire was made to go into embedded into a framework of less than 600 degrees Celsius. Uh, so Austinol has sold to Nobilium. This is back like late 80s, or early 90s. And then Nobilium saying, well, hey, people keep asking for this wire. So why don't we just keep selling it? Even though people are putting it into uh, phosphate bonded investments at 1400. And when we put this wire at 1400, which is high in nickel, there's high nickel content in the Tyconium wire. And what's happening is it's annealing the wire or heat treating the wire, especially if you quench it. So then now we have a dead soft wire, uh, dead soft wire, dead soft wire. Uh, do I have any Tyconium wire here? I must have a bit left. Uh, it, it, it becomes really uh, dead soft. So we bend it once and it remains in this position like a coat hanger, it's dead soft. Back and forth two, three times, it breaks. What's better and maybe don't fret about Tyconium being discontinued, is the stainless steel uh, rot wire clasp. And here I'll solder it to the framework uh, before putting on some occlusion rims, which probably should have been done beforehand. But the dentist is gonna say framework try and, and uh, vertical dimension and centric relation since it's opposing as a complete upper denture all at the same time. So, I call this adventure and prudentotontics uh, 8001 because I think it took me 80,000 to say, can we just stop this? Dental assistant, dentist, dental assistant, metal technicians that are pretending there's no milled ledges, there's no surveyor here. Uh, and then now we're calling ourselves, you know, a dental technician and compartmentalizing our dental technology as to, well, no, I'm the crown, I'm the uh, fixed prosthodontic uh, dental technician. Well, if you're the fixed prosthodontic technician, you must know something about partial dentures as well. You can't just forego that information. And uh, I think that's all I can say about this. Tyconium is a big kind of angst with me. But I mean, just go with the stainless steel wire. There's more resiliency. There's more modulus for elasticity that's not lost after casting at high temperatures. And let's talk about uh, long span Kennedy class four, adventure 8,000 and 80,000 and two. Dentist again, somehow this tongue, everyone's got a macroglossia, seems to get in the way. But anyways, take it out of the way. Border molded, no. Uh, a rush to do things because it looks like recent extraction. I would wait till this heals, eliminating a reline. But nevertheless, we could move forward. Acrylic partial denture, maybe. But dentist asked for cast partial. Kennedy class four. I can see here now some more pretend dental technology going on with the metal ledge. The ledge has an undercut. The ledge has an undercut on seven, an undercut on six. So how good is a ledge to have a path of insertion or a path of dislodgement? I have to block out the ledges and a faint ledge that is kind of inverse here on number uh, three, seven. No rest preparations. Looks like there's one here. But then this has just hit me with another nerve. And I don't pretend to be, you know, all uh, uh, bothered too much about Denture Adventure 80,002. But we do have some basics that I keep seeing uh, repeated over and over again. 
if we have the loan abutment on the lower or upper as a, is a class three, toothborne parcel denture, but a long span. So we're going to have some rotation where the anterior of this denture is going to want to lift. So when we have, I'll crudely draw tooth number seven. And we have our height of contour, which not much of one. Thank you very much, Mr. Ceramic Technician or Mr. Yeah, Mr. Ceramic Technician that did it give me any kind of undercut to work with or if it was a gold technician that was doing it. I can't see if this is an all gold crown. No, ceramic. Uh, you didn't leave me any kind of contour. So if this is the mesial, this is the distal. We know that the mesial wants to be uh, uh, disengaging this way with this long span. So if we could have our clasps come from the distal and then this depth of throw of undercut, Mr. Ceramic Technician, if this is two millimeters, then on the lingual side, we will create a ledge, milled preferably please, to the path of insertion of two millimeters. Therefore, when this clasp engages to the mesial buckle of the 3.7, it's contacting the tooth. And on the reciprocating side, we have the ledge or the trailing edge, trailing edge of the ledge, trailing edge of the ledge. Oh, it rhymes. Nice. Trailing edge of the ledge, contacting the lingual side of the 3.7 at the same time, and then disengaging from the tooth as this clasp disengages from the retentiveness throw or the retention of the height of contour. Disengages, disengages, simultaneous. Simultaneous disengagement. Do I have that here, Crown and Bridge Technicians? No, I don't. Thank you very much. But what do I have to do? I have to block out this excessively. Could be an acrylic parcel. We would apron or plate these lingual sides for an acrylic parcel, but the dentist has asked for a chromium cobalt parcel denture, which has to be blocked out just specifically. And there is some sense of satisfaction of inserting this and not inserting. I'm looking around here at all the margins, tight. At the block out underneath, you can see the block out here, which would be the same block out as if it was acrylic, although a little bit more accurate if we didn't block out the uh, acrylic master model, make a duplicate to create the acrylic partial and duplicate. And we can see that this partial denture will have a tendency to do this movement. So we have clasps at the back. We engage mesial buckle undercut, mesial buckle of the seven, and over here, distal of seven, we just utilized both here at the same time. So this is a takeaway from the pretend odontics. This is a takeaway that I see all the time where the clasps, if I would see what I do see, is I see tooth number seven, height of contour, and the clasps going mesial to distal. So, if this is the mesial, this is the distal, and the partial denture has a tendency to go here, then this will go down further into Mr. Gingiva. So really not engaging any undercut at all, the further down it goes, and then this tooth here, probably question mark, will be lost in the short time. So, uh, happy Saturday, dental technicians. I hope we take a few things away from adventure number 80,001 and 80,002. And uh, I guess if I get into this mood in the future, there'll be 80,003 and 80,004 and 80,005 and et cetera, et cetera. So let's be the super techs that we are and try to eliminate the pretend odontics. Uh, let's try to eliminate errors because you know after... X amount of cases, this job is hard. Let's not make it harder. Enjoy your weekend, people. Till next time.